Steve Green, your PMQ publisher and uh, and host for Pizza Marketing Masters. Today, uh, we have somebody who is really in the field a lot. His name is Matt Plapp, and he's with mattplapp.com. Uh, since 2008, he's been helping pizzerias sell more pizza, and we're going to have him on today to reveal some secrets. So, Matt, are you still there? There he is. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. We really appreciate that. Uh, you, you've been pretty busy recently. You've been uh, trekking around the country despite COVID, yep. uh, helping. Uh, uh, let's see, you just got back from the Midwest right now. What, what, where did you go? You went to Minnesota, right? I've been to Minnesota, yeah. Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Washington in the past four weeks. Okay, very good. So um, uh, let let me. Well, do you? Why don't we? Why don't you tell our audience uh, your specialty in marketing yeah. and why it's so important now uh, yeah. to be very aware of the kind of things that you're doing. Yeah. So yeah, perfect. Yeah. Like I said, like you said, my name's Matt Plapp. Company is Restaurant Marketing That Works. You can find that at mattplapp.com or restaurantmarketingthatworks.com. And I've been in digital marketing since 1999. I've been in Facebook advertising since 2008. I discovered marketing, digital marketing kind of on accident. And in 2008, decided to focus on helping small businesses. One of our first businesses was a cheeseburger place in Northern Kentucky. I mean, my office is in downtown Cincinnati, but I live in Northern Kentucky. And what we found was that a lot of small businesses in particular, one, two, three person operation restaurants, and even the bigger ones, but especially the smaller ones, the pa- they don't have the budgets to go out and spend a lot of money on advertising. Uh, you know, like there's a, a brand in Cincinnati, La Rosa's Pizza. They've got buku number of locations. They spend six figures on radio and TV and all that. Well, the little mom and pop Grimaz Pizza near my house doesn't have that ability. And so I found that the way that they can leverage and kind of get that is what I call create your own radio station. And so the concept I've been preaching for a while is that as a small business, you should own a database. You should own it name, email, birthday, whatever information you can get, phone number, so that you can consistently reach out to them when you need business. You know, we've got a lot of clients that actually thrived during the pandemic this year because they had an audience, they could turn the switch on. I mean, I remember March 16th was when it hit here in Cincinnati area. And right away, we turned our focus to our clients and said, hey, how can we help you talk to your customers more often? How can we tell them about your online order and about your uh, different digital rewards, about your curbside pickup, about your you know, touchless delivery? And the businesses that we knew that had big databases that we had helped them build did a lot better. I, I had one client was up 12% and he was a dine-in restaurant pizza and dine-in went away, as you know. Uh, it was actually right. three months wow. from that business and dine-in was 75% of his business. And he was up. Why was he up? We helped him build a database of 18,000 people that he could quickly pivot and say, hey, here's how you buy from us now. And we need your support more than ever. So the biggest secret in my mind uh, that businesses just still haven't adapted is you've got to know who your customers are and you've got to have a turnkey way to reach out to them without having to spend money. A lot of times you got to buy a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad that just work great. But if you don't have a way to easily reach your customers via text and even email, email still works if you don't write, but text and email and even remarketing, uh, that's what you've got to have. You got to have the ability to reach out to them when you need to. Mm-hmm. Good. So those are the three. So you, you, uh, you do Facebook advertising to build up your database and then you uh, utilize your database. Uh, and there's three ways to do that through email, through text, um, and what's the other way? Uh, remarketing. Remarketing. Okay. Yeah, we didn't talk about that one, but uh, then you uh, then your job is to get people to buy more pizza. That seems like a pretty uh, smart way to manage customers. And you kind of like to use the idea of it being a radio station, but you don't. You 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 you're like a radio station. You're broadcasting information to them. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. So th- th- this works out really well with digital marketing, doesn't it? What's, what's yeah. the connection? How can you lever- How can you make your digital marketing? Well, I guess that kind of answers itself. But because of COVID, uh, did 
most of the benefit come from people that had digital marketing or did that make a difference? Oh yeah, huge. Uh, our clients that had the biggest impact are the ones that had the largest database. <clears throat> I mean, it comes down to, if you look at a rate to compare it to a radio station, I can buy radio from Q102 in Cincinnati for $150 a commercial, or I can go down to the country station in Dry Ridge, Kentucky, which is about 25 miles south of here for $10 a commercial. Why does it cost me 10 versus 150? Because Q102 has got a giant audience. And so when they turn that switch on and they can talk to a big audience, they're going to be able to impact more people. Well, it's the same for your small business. And this concept came about 2008, 2009. I was talking to a guy who had a one location restaurant in Northern Kentucky. And people are infatuated sometimes with hearing their name on the radio or seeing the TV commercial. Uh, I had one client that was infatuated with seeing their billboard at the Cincinnati Reds game to the tune of 60 grand a year. We had no clue if anybody actually walked in from seeing their billboard at the Reds game, but they had to buy it. They were a Reds fan. It was what they always did. But I remember talking to this one restaurant. I said, let me ask you a question. Radio is sold on what's called an average quarter hour. So for example, WLW in Cincinnati will tell their customers every 15 minutes, we reach 10,000 people. Well, that sounds cool. I'm a one location pizza place. I'm going to reach 10,000 people and eh, wrong because Cincinnati is a pretty big 45 minute you know, circle. If you look at the whole radius of the city, if you narrow that down, that 10,000 actually probably gets closer to 250 to 300 around your restaurant. And of those 250 to 300 that are listening when your commercial comes on, now you're down to about 50. And of those 50 who actually are, you know, want to buy from you, know, like, and trust you. Now you're down to five or 10 people. And so my concept has always been, don't worry about buying media from a big boy, buy the, spend your marketing dollars on building a database around your restaurant, like Facebook. You can buy a Facebook or Instagram ad, target people within two to three miles of your restaurant and say, hey, I want to target women who are married with kids that live within three miles of my restaurant. Now you just narrowed your audience from this giant behemoth audience the station gave you to a little one. But my big thing I talk about is use that money to build a database. Don't just tell people, hey, we've got family specials. Here's the deal. Come get it. Tell them you've got a family special. And if you want it, you have to click the, the link below to enroll in our program. When people take an action, they are more likely to visit your restaurant. And when they take that action, you should get their name, their phone number, their birthday. Now, all of a sudden, you have a database. You don't have to spend money to acquire that person anymore. They're already in your database. So you just every month spend your money to get new people. Okay, so let's talk about once you have the people and yep. you know their birthday and you know all this information about them, what are some of the ways that you use that information to make your your marketing more impactful? So what we do on the front end is, number one, we ask on the front end a couple questions to help us identify if they're a new customer, a frequent customer, or a lost customer. Because that's three different conversations. If somebody's never been to your restaurant before, you're going to talk to them and give them information differently than you're going to talk to somebody that comes all the time. And then a customer who told you they haven't been in a while, you better talk to them differently. You better bribe them a little more or maybe get them to come back a little more, You know, somehow give them a, even a bigger perk. Because if they already knew, know you and they already liked you at some point and they're giving you a second, third, fourth, fifth chance, Get them back more often and get them to become a frequent customer. So we do that on the front end. After we get that, we have a series of messages that we put together via text, Facebook Messenger, uh, Instagram, email, and Facebook that we reach out to that person based on who they are, where they're at in the process. And over the course of 90 days, our goal is to get them to take a handful of actions to walk into the restaurant. And that way we know that they're a valid customer. We get an idea of, uh, you know, more information on them. Are they married? Do they have kids? Uh, do they live, live or work near the restaurant? Because that's a big element right now. You know, a lot of my clients that are in the suburbs right. are seeing a bigger lunch push right now because people are working from home still. Whereas mm -hmm. some of my clients that are in downtown, like in Cincinnati, they're not seeing that push for lunch because the people aren't here. And so we try and find out more information so that in six months or a year, when maybe the next COVID comes or the next reason you need to drive home some business, you've got an email and text database that you can say, okay, I want to talk to our frequent women customers. Here's the message I want to go to them. I want to send a text message to our frequent male customers. Go here. I want an email to our married women who have kids. I mean, that's where messaging gets better. Like I told you earlier, we had pizza Saturday night at my house. The message that was sent to me or could have been sent to me 
is going to vary than what might go to somebody down the street. I'm married with a couple of kids. Person down the street might be single with no kids. The mm. problem is most pizza restaurants are doing the same Facebook post, the same Instagram post, the same ad, the same text, and the same email to all their customers when all their customers are different. So we, we focus on building that database and separating the database. So that's why I advise restaurants to do is you need to build that audience, but then you need to segment it so that you have a different conversation with people based on their demographics. Mm -hmm. And you keep track of that even at the Facebook level. And uh, so you'll know like people's birthdays on Facebook. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So if you know their birthday, what are, what are some birthday marketing strategies? That yeah, you sure. suggest. The biggest thing I'll put I'll put out there for people is you got to think about this with your birthday. Would you rather have something free or a coupon? Like for example, Steve, if, if it was your birthday and I came over to your house with an envelope and gave you a coupon for 10% off, would you be happy I gave you a coupon? No. Exactly. But if I came over and said, Hey bro, here's a free pizza on me, you'd be like, heck yeah, brother. Love it. I'd, I'd love it. And I, I think, love you too. And yeah. I, I, think, I think a lot of people really struggle with that. They go, oh, I don't want to give anything, anything for free. Well, I'm like, well, right. you got to think about it this way. If you market to the person correctly, they're going to spend more. You know, mm -hmm. there's a restaurant near my house that for every year I get a birthday offer in May of my, my birthday is, and it's for a free dessert with a purchase of $50. And I'm like, thank you. For my birthday, you just gave me a coupon. I've never spent under a hundred dollars at the restaurant. So all they got to do is give me the free dessert. If they give me a free dessert, I'm going to come in and spend 50 bucks. Now I tell restaurants, build your offer so that it encourages them to spend on something else. So if I was a pizza restaurant, I might not give Matt Plapp a free pizza on his birthday. I might give Matt Plapp a free dessert pizza on his birthday or a free order of cookies because Last time I checked, not many people are ordering, hey, call up, uh, yeah, yeah, Basilio's, give me a free order of cookies. Uh, I'm going to order mm -hmm. a pizza, a two liter, and some, and some cheese sticks. And so at the end of the day, I end up spending more. But the problem is so many businesses have it in their heads. Oh, I've, I've got I've to you know, make money on everybody. Well, if you give them the right offer, it'll encourage them to spend money. But just don't give coupons for people's birthdays. Okay, well, what advice, uh, what advice would you give people that have online ordering now uh, and they're just they're there. I've heard a lot of people. We did a survey of our readers and a lot of them were just saying, OK, I've got online ordering now, but but I need some visibility. What are the easiest first steps that you would suggest that they do in order to get, uh, you know, to get orders coming through their systems? Facebook retargeting. So there's a thing called a pixel like right now. You know, we're on StreamYard and I can see the Facebook pixel is installed on this website, meaning StreamYard could advertise to Matt Platt because I have used StreamYard. So if I'm Basilio's Pizza, I need to make sure that I either have the Facebook pixel installed on my website or you can even have what's called Google Tag Manager where Google has a remarketing pixel too. And what a pixel is, is we've all seen it. You go to Auto Trader. this is the best example, go to Auto Trader look up a specific car, a 2019 Chevy Suburban white with a sunroof. I can promise you the next couple of days, you're going to have ads pop up on your newsfeed for a Chevy Suburban around your, around your area. It's just going to happen. Well, from a, a marketing standpoint for that pizza restaurant, if you've got online ordering, you need to have the pixel on your website so that you can market to people that have been to your online ordering. And there's even other ways to do it. It depends on the ordering system. You can even have what's called a, a conversion pixel. That is people that actually have ordered that, you know, that somebody came, clicked the button, spent money and went to a thank you page. So that's a big one. Well, talk to whoever processes your online orders. And this varies a lot because there's all the different POSs. But if there's a way that they can redirect all successful purchases from their online ordering platform back to one central page. Let's say there's a website, a page on your website. Let's say I'm using Basilio's Pizza in Montana or in uh, Minnesota. It's a client of ours. Let's say, I don't know if they have this or not, but run this by them. But let's say they have online ordering mm -hmm. and somebody goes online and they order, maybe it's toast and they order through the system. When they click submit, it ought to redirect to a page, basilios.com slash thank you for ordering. 
And so you tell Facebook, anybody that landed on this page placed an order. And I want them to see these ads. And so you can serve different ads to them at different times of day, different days of the week, so that you know you're reaching a more targeted audience versus anybody else. Because the ad copy can say, hey, Matt, we can't wait for you to order this week. Click below to place your favorite order. And that's going to resonate differently than if Matt's never ordered there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I should note that uh, that we we will be happy to take some questions. If anybody has a question for Matt to uh, uh, to pipe in, ask your question, and uh, uh, get in line. I'm sure we've got. Uh, if you're not going to answer them, but let's see if we you can answer some questions yeah, before sure. people ask them. Okay. Uh, so in the in so the question is is what's the most frequent question that you get? Uh, from pizza people when they when they call you and they say Matt I'm a pizza guy can you help me yep so uh, the, the the biggest question I get is how should they be on Facebook or Instagram mm -hmm. and which one is best and what I always tell people is this I want you like I have the Ohio River just south of where I'm at right now a lot of businesses don't build a big enough bridge to get over the river they get on Facebook a little, they get on Instagram a little, they get on YouTube a little, they get on TikTok a little, they get on LinkedIn a little. They never build a successful bridge. So what I tell my clients is you ought to you want to build every bridge before you build a new one. So for example, Facebook. I think Facebook without a doubt is the number one medium to be on for any restaurant. I don't care what kind of restaurant you are. Until you exhaust your budget there, you shouldn't go spend some money somewhere else. And so like I see Mike Hardy ask, do mailers work? All advertising works. It's a matter of if you're, you know, number one, the message is correct. Number two, the message is correct for the audience. Number three, the call to action resonates with that audience. And then number four, what's the cost of acquisition? Because you might do a direct mail piece and it might cost you $10 every time somebody redeems an offer from that direct mail piece. It might cost you five bucks on Facebook. It might cost you six bucks on Instagram. All advertising works. It's which one is more efficient, which one gives you the best opportunity to win. And so the biggest question I get is people say, well, should I be on Facebook or Instagram? I tell them, number one, dominate Facebook. Make sure you are using Facebook correctly and effectively, and you're seeing a response from it. Once you feel like you have successfully got a system in place where you are using Facebook correctly, videos each week, pictures each week, responding to comments, responding to reviews, then step over to Instagram. Once you get Instagram rock and rolling, then go to YouTube. Then if you have time to play with TikTok and whatever else is out there, that's fine. But the strategy I tell people is stop building half-built bridges. Because if I go down the Ohio River down here and I build a half-built bridge over to Newport and a half-built one to Covington and a half-built one to Bellevue and a half-built one to Ludlow, at the end of the day, if I try and drive on any of them, I'm going to fall into the river. And that's why I see a lot of digital strategies is they don't effectively use one medium. They, they half-heartedly use a bunch of them. But if you're to rank them, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I want to give you a YouTube tip in a minute too once we get a chance. Okay, I tell you what. I'm going to go get the first edition of PMQ. And while I'm getting that, would you tell our audience what you were just teasing? Yeah. So YouTube, one thing a lot of people don't realize on YouTube is that if you buy your advertising correctly, what's called pre-roll advertising, you don't pay if somebody skips the ad. And I like this strategy for pizza, especially. I eat pizza once or twice a week. A lot of consumers, it's got to be one of the most frequently eaten food. I'd say pizza. And since Chipotle came along, fast casual Mexican has really uh, climbed the ladder, you know, with hothead burritos and, and, and Chipotle's and Moe's. But pizza is a commonly eaten product. And so if you can just get your logo in front of people, well, on YouTube, you can, you can buy advertising and you don't get charged unless somebody takes the action. They don't click skip ad. They watch your whole ad. Well, most people skip ads. I mean, let's face it. I've watched YouTube videos. I'm sure you have too, Steve. Everybody watches YouTube videos and you click it because you're there to watch a funny video and you're not there to watch the ad. So you click skip ad. Well, if that first three seconds is of Matt Platt's pizza company going, Matt Platt, pizza, you love us, eat pizza. And they click skip ad. Well, they just heard your jingle. And so build your YouTube ads. If you build a 30 second ad, 
build it like it's a three second commercial because you're going to get a lot of three second commercials for free when people skip. But at the end of the day, your goal is to make them remember you so that in two or three days, they're like, man, I'm hungry for pizza. What do you want? Matt's pizza. There you go. Let's see that. I got my, I got one of my PMQs right here. Let's okay. Well, this is the one that's, that started it all in October of 1997. And I want to see if you can recognize the guy on the front cover. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. That's my, that's the picture yeah. I sent you of me and, of, of me and Rolf. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's why you asked that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, you sent me a picture of Rolf Wilkin, who's still around. Yeah, he's still. I used to do his marketing, database marketing, uh, before I started PMQ, and and he was one of my most successful customers. That's so awesome. I used his story to launch PMQ. So I was very glad to see that you were uh, that you were in there helping him out uh, now. Uh, do, you after, that, uh, do you have that picture yeah. I sent you? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, but, but there was, yeah, there was nothing. I didn't have any story to go with it. It was just, I thought, well, I, there he is, a great picture of Rolf. It must have been before the uh, the pandemic, or was yeah. it just just now? Yeah, was, it was just was, now. You took weeks. that. That was like three well, weeks ago. Well, he looks great. Uh, oh, the guy's yeah. a beast. The guy is a beast. That's how, when it's funny, when I emailed you that, yeah. you emailed me back, and you said, hey, how come you sent, what was the, give us the picture of Rolf? And I'm like, well, I mean, we talked about me traveling the country. He's a pizza yeah. restaurant to work with. I just yeah. saw him. I didn't know he was the cover of the first yeah. issue. Yeah, yeah, right. he was the cover boy. Actually, since he was the first cover, we actually had him, he's the only guy that's ever been on our cover twice. And he was on it a second time just because it was the 10th anniversary of our magazine. And we put the original guy and we gave an update on where Rolf yeah. was. Uh, 20 years ago, um, 10 years later, and now uh, you're working with him right now. So he maybe we should do a story about uh, what Rolf is doing now based on some of the work that you're doing with him. Yeah, That would be kind of interesting. So, so I was curious about what Rolf was doing with you now. Yeah. Because he's a really aggressive, uh, uh, not aggressive in a bad way. He's, he's yeah. the nicest guy in the world, but he's just so focused is he still that way or is he oh yeah uh, he yeah. hasn't slowed down huh i met Rolf at a trade show about two years ago and mm -hmm. then coincidentally he bought my he bought one of my books i think sell more slices he bought that uh and by the way if there's anybody watching this as a present from pmq if you want to email uh, matt at mattplap.com i'll make sure my assistant sends you out a free copy but he had one of my books and then we had, I had met him at the show. He got one of my books. I guess because he got the book, he got a follow-up kit from us. And he called up. We became clients. Or he became a client of ours. We've worked together now for about, gosh, I want to say it's been probably a year and a half. And we mm -hmm. were just in Arkansas, flew out to meet him uh, back in late August, early September. Uh, went to Bentonville and flew into Bentonville and then went down to his uh, stores there in Fayetteville. He's got eight stores around the area. And the guy's great, man. He's a hustler. Uh, he's innovative. He's one mm -hmm. of the, the first pizza place I've ever been to with a drive through how he does it. I yeah. mean, if people pull up, pizzas are ready, man. Yeah. And if you right. if you order something custom, you pull around front, it's ready in a couple mm -hmm. minutes. The dipping sauces are really doing great. But what we've mm -hmm. done with him is exactly what I preach. We, we run all of his front-end yeah. digital marketing, all his Facebook and Instagram ads, and we drive people into our database program, and then we remind them on the back end. So when people come through it, depending on how they come through, they get you know, mm -hmm. retargeting ads. Like we've got an ad running right now that's pretty cool. That's a video of all the different pizzas being dipped. When we were in town, my video team was with me and David said, hey, Rolf, can you give me these videos shot from an iPhone and I'll make it into a cool ad that we can use for an ad to get people to tell us their favorite dipping sauce. We're then going to turn around and we're going to take that dipping sauce and we're going to get people like we've already had like 30 or 40 people right away when we did it, comment their favorite sauce with what pizza. I like the, the the ranch with the pizza and bacon, pizza, pizza and pepperoni bacon, pizza, pepperoni and bacon pizza. And mm -hmm. so we'll take that quote, blow it up, put it on a flyer for a poster for his social media marketing for in-house and tie in. Hey, Matt P loves our pepperoni and bacon pizza with ranch. And then it's got a picture of it dipping in. So it gives us good content on top of good engagement online. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's great. I'm glad you told me that story because those are the kind of stories I think our our readers tune in for. Yeah. You know, just those little moments of brilliance when they they come up with an idea that that really helps them focus. Oh, this is real. Yeah. So uh, so that's really that's really great. I appreciate that. That'd be cool too. We've done a yeah. lot of great pictures. That'd be cool to do an article on that and tell the I, story. Well, I, I think there. You know, you're. Uh, I'm I'm always. Uh, the first four issues of PMQ were actually my stories of my clients nice. and just the little, little stories that don't seem like big things, but they're details that people need to know. Yeah. So I would love it if you were, uh, you know, if you'd like to record some of your adventures in pizza as you're out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think uh, our readers would like to, to share, you know, share in on your adventures. So, you may want to provide us some content. I would love to uh, let you share, have you share some of your adventures with us. Uh, pictures, photos, ideas, zany, stupid things, mistakes, anything that helps people uh, get a little further ahead uh, in selling pizza. So. Can, I, can, I give, can I give a quick tip on Facebook ads? Yeah, please do. So if you look in the Facebook post, make sure you have enough lines of text that force Facebook to put the see more on there. A lot of people will put a Facebook post up on their page. Hey, come see us tonight. Family, it's family night, kids eat free. Well, that's all it is. Whereas if you put, let's say five, six lines of text and a link to your website, when people have to click that see more button, it expands the post. It gives Facebook positive attribution because if a hundred, you look at it this way, if a hundred people are served you know, this Facebook ad, if this was a Facebook ad, a hundred people are, it's served to them. And all of a sudden of those hundred, 75 do nothing. Well, that's 75 people that Facebook has negative attribution on. But if more people do things like click that, see more Facebook goes, Oh, Matt, Rolf, and you know, Justin and Mike clicked, see more. Let's go find more people around the restaurant that look like Matt, Justin, Mike, and Peter. And all of a sudden now you get more people seeing your posts and seeing your content because of that. So it's a, a lot of people put too little of text, put a lot of, put more text, put a call to a headline, a call to act like a newspaper. Like if I would open up your yes. magazine, I'm going to open up your magazine. I promise you there's a headline, there's a sub headline, there's the content. So do that. And then always have links in your post too to lead people to uh, every post is an opportunity to drive traffic somewhere. Drive them to a landing page to get their name and phone number. Drive them to Messenger to get their name, phone number, email. Drive them to your website to order. Drive them to your menu to see it. I think it's a missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any, uh, uh, you have one more tip for us? One more tip. Yeah. So uh, I try to keep these things at 30 minutes. So okay. I, I see I'm getting pretty close, a couple of minutes. So so. You want to share the dashboard real quick, and on my last tip will be. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we wanted yeah. to do that. Yeah, let's let's go see that. That'll be our tip. We have. Uh, yeah, we we got a couple of minutes here. Yeah. So my Good. last my last tip here is track what you're doing. It's like my accountant always told me, nothing yeah. worth doing it was everything worth doing is worth tracking. And so mm -hmm. what we created on our end is a dashboard that we use to monitor our clients' uh, performance. And so like this is an act, this is a pizza restaurant. It's a one location restaurant. They're up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and they've spent $3,600 in advertising money in about, I think it's probably five months. And that's Facebook ads, Instagram ads, and what they pay us. That has driven a lot of stuff. One, it's driven 197,000 impressions. Those 197,000 impressions have led to a lot of engagements. Those engagements have led to a 1900 person database of which we have 1,700 emails, 1,500 phone numbers, 1,400 birthdays. More importantly, it's led to 650 people walking in and spending $23,000. And so the cool part about that also is that we also know where those customers came from. 48% of them told us they were lost customers. I haven't been in in a while. 46% mm -hmm. said, I'm your favorite customer. I'm the one here all the time. And 4% are brand new. Our goal mm -hmm. is to get these numbers that equal 33% each. If I can get a third of your marketing reaching your best customers, a third reaching the piece of people who gave up, and then a third reaching new people, I'm mm -hmm. going to win. And so the way you do that, and this is a tip, is this right here, post engagement. 
Because the concept of advertising, like we said early on, is to get awareness. No matter what you're mm-hmm. doing is get awareness. If you can get that awareness to lead to engagement, you now have the opportunity to see who raised their hand. Somebody commenting on your Facebook post or clicking a link within your post to go to Messenger and give you their phone and email, that's them raising their hand. And when you do that, you build a database. And when you build that database, you can find out the visit frequency, their gender, are they married, do they have kids? And then from there, you can track what I consider what I call front end sales. I can look on here and see that this restaurant in the last 30 days spent $248.93 on Facebook and Instagram ads that got 272 people to give us their information of which 96 walked in and spent $3,100. That's what my biggest tip, do something that's trackable because if you can know that every time you spend X amount, this happens, then you're ahead of the game. One of those Joanne answer asked earlier if direct mail works. If you know your acquisition costs, like down here, we know that every time we spend $6.35, we get a couple impressions, we get an engagement, we get a contact, a customer's contact information, and we get them to walk in for the first visit and spend $36.59. Now I can say, okay, you want to grow your restaurant by how much next month? Let's spend that. Let's, let's How much you want to grow it? Let's divide it by six thirty five. That's what we got to spend. So mm-hmm. if you can your direct mail do that, your TV do that, your radio do that, whatever you're doing, track it. Stop just throwing money out there, but also spend money to build a database. Every dollar that customer has spent on marketing has taken people into a database. So every month we're constantly going after and finding people that look like his ideal customers, the people that are frequent, and eliminating people that say, hey, I'm a lost customer. Let's not find people that look like them because there are traits of a lost customer why they became lost. Matt, uh, we couldn't squeeze in uh, all the information that we'd like to have gotten. Maybe we'll have you back again. I'd love and, it. And uh, be able to to, to create a, a longer and better one uh, after, we, uh, after we work on that. So I'm going to go. Why don't you stay on? Because I want to talk to you after, after we're done. But Ingrid, go ahead and sign us off. And thank you very much for joining me. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you all.